So let me just introduce this uh, panel. So we have a panel that's really a two-part panel. The topic is the IP transition, how we got here and where we're headed. So we're asking the people with the gray hair to talk for a, a short amount of time about how, well, maybe a little what gray are you hair. talking exactly. about? Uh, wait, I have, a, I have a marker here. This will fix this in a, in a second. Um, anyway, um, so uh, we're going to get on and talk a little bit about how we got here, but then you're gonna hear from people smarter than us about where we're headed and uh, the things that uh, BSF and other organizations have been working on. Um, so um, maybe Richard, if I could ask you to kick things off and uh, we're just gonna talk for about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll hand it to the smart guys. Okay. That certainly does not include me, so that's good. Um, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, we hear you it. just so fine. I make yes, sure yes. I see you also. You. Great. It'd be embarrassing to speak and have you have to hold up your, your muted sign. Do you, you have that yeah, handy? Yeah. So Brad's prepared. So everybody else will appreciate this. So anyway, um, uh, thanks for that introduction of, of sorts, I guess. Um, uh, look, I think, you know, we want to go back in history and talk about, you know, where, where we came from. Uh, it, I, I hate to dwell too much on that, but you always can learn a little bit from history. And um, uh, Brad, you'll recall the date better than I. Help me, it's got to be about 10 years ago. Long time ago. At a BSF meeting, and we'd all sat around and said, well, geez, we've taken care of all this great stuff, and we've got uh, SDI video over, over data, and we've, we've created all these standards with SMPT. Our work here is done. You know, what's the VSF going to ever do again? There's nothing to be done. And some foolish people got up and said, well, you know, it'd be really interesting if we could figure out a way to do this over IP, right? And uh, uh, that led us into uh, uh, the alliance that, uh, with Hans uh, that, uh, I, actually, I don't remember who hosted it. I mean, it was at Turner, but I don't know who. Or, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Turner, at, and I think exactly. Brad hosted the meeting, yes. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and we got uh, a number of industry luminaries together in that, that April, and it, it started what has ultimately turned into the JTNM, which we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, but it was really an exciting and, and sort of heady time because um, it, it was interesting to see the perspective that different people across different aspects of the industry had about, well, this IP stuff is probably gonna come, but we're not quite sure, and we're not quite sure how, and let's all sit in a room and try to figure it out. And um, uh, it, it worked out spectacularly in my mind. But I'm, I should let Hans talk a little bit here about this because that's where Hans really came in and got us organized, to tell you the truth. Well, no, not really. I think I can very well remember the meeting, which um, actually I think Brad organized the meeting. And, and, and Felix Poulon at that time in our team, maybe Felix is in, in the audience now, um, at that time he said, hey, Hans, there's something very important happening. Because from the, from the user point of view in the EBU, we were, of course, monitoring the, and we're following the indicators in the industry. And the indicators clearly said there is something big happening. There is a transition happening. And how can we make it um, for the users um, in an organized way um, comfortable to be part of this transition, uh, transition to IP? Um, the word on flexibility, scalability, and so forth was born um, I really um, have to admire my colleagues, Willem Fermos, Yevgen, um, who is also with us here in the audience. I mean, they did fantastic work also in leadership, articulating the user requirements. And I think this was the basis, what we also had then in Atlanta, when we had the meeting, we said, let the users speak first. And I can only reiterate again for today, when we are in front of another transition, we need to hear to the users. We need to hear to user stories and by means of use cases, test our assumptions. And I think this was in a way um, how we have born the JTNM. And, and I think also the other secret of success uh, you have hinted is, is that the, the leading organizations in the professional media field, the four organizations, they came together and actually have formed a task force, the JTNM um, Alliance in order to move the industry. And, and this was so fruitful, um, I have to say, and it's an example 
uh, an example from the past and I think also a prominent example for the future. Yeah, yeah thank really you. Really very I'm... successful, I have to say. The collaboration was amazing. And uh, we, as I recall, you ended up with 130 use cases that we had to ultimately uh, work yeah, through. Can... So it was, it was an interesting time. <laughs> absolutely. I think I cut uh, you off, Brad, I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. Yeah, absolutely. 100, 130 use cases uh, that, for, that eventually boiled down into uh, things that were driving topics discussed in the JTM reference architecture. And that document, although it was written quite some time ago, is actually being referenced more and more now than it, than it, than it had when it originally came out. Um, you know, as, as we were getting ready to talk about this, we, we had sat down and uh, Richard and I had sat down and just thought back a little bit about some key people that really move this forward in the US side of things. And there are two people that I wanted to bring up briefly. One of them is someone that uh, was around in the BSF a lot. In the earlier days, his name was Pierre Costa. And I don't know how many presentations I came to over the years where Pierre was talking about ATM over Sonnet and how we were gonna put video over ATM over Sonnet and how this precision timing in the Sonnet ring and so on. And then he came back, what Richard, a couple of months later yeah, at I, one I, point, he said, I'm completely he, wrong. Yeah, but he had gotten up at a, at a session and was just adamant that, that, that IP was impossible. It would never work. And and the, the, even though we'd had some presentations about it, he was like, those people are smoking stuff. This will never, ever happen. I'm telling you as a representative of a Bell company, you know, or for whatever, this will not occur. And you're right. Three months, four months later, he came back to a session and said, I was completely wrong. I mean, he was, he was amazing. He got up in front of, the, you know, a hundred people and said, I was wrong. And he said, I've seen the light. And, the yeah, and he started it. talking about ethernet over IP over Sonnet. And then he was just talking about I, IP over Sonnet. That's it. And, so that was one person. The other person I just wanted to give credit to because he really, um, there is a thing, it's an ancient thing called the, the Ironworks Protocol or something like that. And it? that comes from uh, Frank Karanaka, who uh, has been working for DirecTV for quite some time. Um, we sat down at a, at a barbecue restaurant in Austin, Texas, and Rick was there. I forget the other, who else might be there, but Frank Aranaka said, uh, okay, Richard was there too. And Frank Aranaka just said, the telcos are going to IP, period. The video networks and video transport is this separate overlay network. Financially, it will not continue to exist. The only way that transport can continue to be functional is if we ride the core of the telco infrastructure, which will be IP. And boy, did he get it right. And so I just wanted to, to call out Frank and recognize him because he really, he, he made a key contribution with that. He changed a lot of people's minds. It was great. Yeah. Hmm. So the last thing I, I wanted to point out and then, um, maybe we'll see if you guys have any closing thoughts before we hand it off to the smart people in the room, is that the JTNM consists of, uh, uh, keep me honest here, uh, the member organizations are the AES, the AMWA, the EBU, the SMPTE, and the BSF. I think I got that right. Yes. The MWA, right? Yeah, the AMWA, yep. <laughs> and it may look to folks from the outside like there's all kinds of activities going on around IP that are uncoordinated and, you know, whatever. Um, but that's actually not, not true. So um, maybe in closing, I can ask you, Richard, to talk a little bit about the, the clearinghouse notion of the JTNM and then Hans, maybe you could have a final word uh, for, the, for the users. Yeah. I, I, I... I was going to tag on to that. You're right, Brad. It, it, it may appear chaotic. I guess most things in life do these days, especially. But, uh, you, you know, there is a tremendous amount of effort between these organizations to ensure that we don't duplicate effort because we know how important it is to get this work done. And, and so that's JTM's 
that sort of primary goal, of course, is to avoid that. But the other valuable uh, activity it has is this clearinghouse idea. And that is to try to gather the best information across all of our organizations and make sure it's published uh, widely, broadly through JTM as well as all of our individual organizations. And it is absolutely a collaboration. It's one of the, the things I'm very proud about, uh, you know, all of our IP work. Um, you know, some of it, you know, in my mind, I thought was sort of obvious that IP would take over, but it wasn't obvious how to get it there. And I think uh, we owe a lot of credit to, to you and to Hans and uh, the other members of, of the JTM board who have been able to really keep the industry focused and uh, efficient about trying to do this. Of course, it's never fast enough, I know, but imagine how much slower it would be if we weren't doing this. Great, thank you. Hans, mm. some closing words, please. Yeah, I, I think we need to note in, in all of these big transitions that we are today at a state where I would characterize it, the work is done and it is not done. As we roll out now, and, and I think Yevgen Kostyukevich actually, um, I really admire his work when he moved in the middle of the COVID crisis, the recent test into a kind of an online testing environment, crazy, I mean, absolutely crazy, um, and all the work which is going on. But what, what we really note is that as now the transition to IP is going to happen, it's rolled out in large facilities, people learn. We learn about what is successful and we learn about the weaknesses where still work is required. So that's the reason why I say the work is done and it's not done. And I think we need to, we need to be very mindful that we don't sit back and let the market decide everything because the work is not completely done. When we look at the full stack of an environment, um, I think there's a lot of work still to be done. And I think this is, uh, this is our next job. The job is well underway, but it's not finished. And I'm not sure with this transition in, in the IT world, the, the job is never finished. There's always an evolution. And, and that's good because it characterizes also innovation. So we need, we need to stay hard on the ball and, and again, keep user requirements at the forefront because this helps us that we identify that the industry is developing the right answers, be it in specification standards, products, and so forth. Terrific. I'd like to thank, uh, thank you, Richard and Hans, my dear friends. I really am looking forward to uh, being together with you in person when that's possible. Yes. And uh, thank you so much for your, your ideas and your thoughts here. Probably. And right, thanks to I Richard and Brad for the leadership as well in JTNF. Uh, well, thank you. Takes, it takes an army. We're just the, the face of it. Yeah. Who's it's missing? Good. Well, SMPT, Bruce Devlin is missing. Yeah, Bru yeah well, Tom, we, do you want to talk about, about No, about I mean, that? it's fine. It's Any? fine. I think oh, Bruce will forgive us, will forgive us, but uh, they, of course, have done a huge work in this crazy, fantastic committee work, which you can't miss in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken as the, as the president of the SMPTE. Yes. So if you're not aware, Hans is now the, Thank the you. president and congratulations for that. Hans, all right. Nice um, Collaboration, colleagues, between yeah. all of us is key. Yeah, yeah. 